Le Dormeur du Val was my first creative work in years, because after my studies, I pretty much gave up on creating as I started a non-artistic business career. But that made me a little unhappy, so I quit my job not long ago looking for change. I became interested in virtual production and real-time filmmaking, so I decided to start by learning the basics of Blender and the Unreal Engine through tutorials and online classes by Epic. Paris was under quarantine when the RTSC was launched, which made it a perfect opportunity to see what I could do with what little I knew. In the end, I'm quite impressed with what a complete beginner like me can achieve working alone with just a mid-range computer and in less than a month. I started the challenge with a single asset, a digital human provided by Machines Studios. I wanted to do something different with it, and that's when I thought about adapting the poem Le Dormeur du Val by Arthur Rimbaud. Le Dormeur du Val is a short piece about a young boy calmly sleeping in the sun. As the poem progresses, we realize that this idyllic scene represents a soldier lying dead on the ground. It was written by Rimbaud in 1870, when he was just 16 years old and is most likely influenced by the Franco-Prussian War of the same year. The visual style of the short is inspired by the art of the time, the early years of Impressionism in works from artists like Cicely or Monet, or earlier paintings such as this Dead Man by Monet, which is the reference for the soldier's pose. The poem depicts a luxurious nature, to which I added a couple of new elements. For example, the poppy, which is a common symbol to commemorate fallen soldiers, or the tree trunk and rifle, both used to structure the space around the main character and to incarnate the presence of death and war in the scene. The overall project is fairly simple, as I said early on a couple of limitations. First, few animations. Second, one small setting only. And third, little to no facial animation. This reminded me of the classical unities of classical French theatre, the obligation to respect limitations of time, space and action. Some of the most renowned French plays were created while respecting these constraints. Such limitations should not be a hindrance to creativity. I created a small setting, using free assets from the marketplace to create the landscape and clouds, using mega scans to populate the scene with high quality assets, and using the foliage tool to recreate a lavish clearing as depicted in the poem. Meanwhile, the control given by the Unreal Engine allowed me to play with the sun and lights to create a scene that spans over a full day, where seeing a soldier slowly pass away as dusk settles in. I probably lacked the knowledge to use materials to their full potential, but the engine allowed me to use materials in interesting ways. To create a river, for example, or to increase the paleness of the soldier as the day goes by. More importantly, a simple tutorial and a couple of tweaks were enough to achieve a brushstroke effect thanks to a post-processing material. Another key element in this short was the ability to multiply cameras. I remember the struggle to find good equipment when I was a film student, so having virtually any camera available at hand is amazing. I played around with locations, putting them in places which would have been physically inaccessible. All of these elements give a sense of freedom and let me achieve the exact shots I wanted, playing around with the composition of the frame. Finally, I was able to create a first edit and sequencer and watch a rough cut in the engine. I was then free to alter the shots at will, on the fly, even move mountains around and see the result instantly, immediately seeing if the rhythm and camera movement worked. This iterative way of working has a lot of potential. I'm excited to see non-linear workflows in the future of film production and I do hope that real-time filmmaking will bring a new wave of original creators.